Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Today I want to go ahead and start doing some scenery work here on the layout. And that's going to mean getting kind of messy because we're going to be using sculpta mold to create some smooth landforms here. So stick around for the video and we'll get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. That way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. Now, as I said in my video on painting uh, track here on the modules, uh, my process involves uh, starting with, you know, laying the track and getting that all set up. And then the beginning of the scenery process involves painting it. So we've got the track all painted. I've done both modules. And so now I'm ready to start doing the scenery work here on the layout. So at this point, what I, uh, what I am planning on doing is proceeding to doing uh, any landforms that need to be created. So what we're going to do here, this is, I've turned this module around. This is the module where we've got the uh, gas works is going to be over here and the cattle pen is going to be over here. And that's the back and this is the front. Okay. So what I had planned to do is put a small hill here with a meadow that's going to break up this large flat area. So we're going to go ahead and, and start with this area. And the first thing we have to do is create a landform. And for that, I'm going to use some styrofoam, just like this here. And we're going to cut that out and cut it to contours. And then we'll go ahead and use some sculpta mold to smooth out those contours and create a nice rolling hill here. And that's going to serve as sort of a meadow uh, where we can have some sheep uh, or some cattle uh, uh, waiting to be processed at the cattle pen. And um, after that, once that's dry, then we can come back and I've got uh, some acrylic paint here. These are just paint samples that I picked up at the local hardware store, Lowe's. And um, they work great for some paint for the base uh, of the scenery here. So let's go ahead. What I want to do is zoom in here now and we'll start the process of cutting the foam landforms that are going to go in here and getting them contoured and glued down using the uh, uh, liquid nails adhesive. And then once, you know, those are in place, then we'll go ahead and I'll make up some sculpta mold and we'll get those landforms smoothed out. Then we'll come back and do the ground foam base and the earth base uh, before we can get to uh, doing the ballasting. So let's get started. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just got a piece of the same green foam that I used here on the layout as the uh, baseboard uh, top here. And uh, that's going to serve as my uh, scenery base as well. And I took a, uh, I took a, well, <laughs> let me step back a second. What I did was I took a magic marker here and I just went over the area and outlined what I wanted to do as far as scenery and where I wanted to put in uh, some, uh, some foam, stacked foam parts to build up this little uh, rolling meadow here. And so then I went ahead and I've gone ahead and, and drawn out the outline for that contour here on this uh, piece of foam. So what I want to do now is I've got my uh, uh, razor knife here and I'm going to take that and we're just going to start cutting following those lines that I did on the foam using the magic marker. And I'm just going to come around here and come up with a few undulations and curves and the like so that we get a nice smooth landform created. And after about two cuts, this should pop apart fairly easily, assuming I can stick to the same line. Let's see if that'll pop. Yep. Almost. Okay. So there we've got that part done. Okay. And next, 
I want another piece here to uh, stack it up and make a, uh, a little hill. Okay. Make a couple of passes through this one too. Okay. So that gives us a three-step contour. So we've got the base, then we got the mid here, and we got the top of the hill. Now obviously this needs to be contoured a bit. So what I'm going to do is we'll just take this and go around here, around the edge, and slice it down a bit to give it a little bit of rounding out. Okay, so that's going to sit up here like this. Okay, and we're going to round it off a little bit here on the back side too. Okay, there. Okay, so that'll be right up here on top of the hill. And then we're going to do the same thing here to the front. Let me go ahead and figure out a place to start here. There we go. And I'm just going to come along and slice it. And this doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to cover this with our sculpt -a mold Okay. Okay. Get all that out of the way. And let me get this in the trash here before it ends up all over the floor. Okay, so now we've got a contoured landscape. This needs a little bit more shape here. Needs to be cut down a little bit further. There we go. So you can just smooth these off fairly quickly using one of these little razor knives. They dull quite quickly going through this stuff though, I'll tell you. There. That does that. And I'll get this all thrown away here. Okay, so that's going to be the uh, general shape of my landform here. Okay, so what I want to do now is let me get uh, my, uh, my container of liquid nails, my tube of liquid nails, and we'll go ahead with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, using my liquid nails, we'll go ahead and get this set up to glue it down to the base. Like this. Okay, and I'm going to plop that into place here. And then I'm going to, I'm going to take some of my T pins and just use those to hold it in place while it's setting up. And one more over here. And then we've got the other one here. Okay, that's got that taken care of. And we'll set this one in place. And you notice I left the plastic uh, in place here as well, so that the, uh, the fascia is going to be protected. There we go. So now we're just going to let that sit. And we'll get the sculpt mold ready. Let me 
and make sure these ends are solid. Pin down here. There, that's good. Okay, now with sculpt mold. Sculpt mold um, is a cellulose uh, containing plaster. And uh, it, it, it's been very, very popular for modeling work for some time now. And it's uh, one of the great things about sculpt mold is that you can uh, uh, put it on here and once it dries in about 30 minutes, it gets, comes out about as hard as plaster. And uh, it holds together quite well because of the cellulose in it. Uh, and it, uh, it can be sanded and cut and shaped uh, and painted and stained and everything afterwards. So it's really a good material for use uh, on model railroads. Now, in this case, you can use it for both scenic work, like I'm going to use it, or you can use it for casting. So if you wanted to cast rocks, you could do that as well. But basically, for the, for the work I'm going to use, you use a two-to-one mixture, two parts of sculpt mold to one part water. Now, if you were going to put this in a mold and make a rock mold with it, you'd want a one-to-one -one mix. So it's a little bit, a little bit uh, watery, a little bit more uh, thinner consistency, so it will go in, into your mold. Okay, so I've got a couple of cups of um, sculpt mold here. I'll put this and close it before I get out any water. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and get something to, I've got my spatula here for stirring. I just need to get some water. Okay, I've added the, uh, I've got my sculpt mold here in the uh, mixing bowl. And now I'm going to start adding a cup of water to it. And we'll get that all stirred in. Mixed up. Okay, so I've got that pretty well mixed up. So let's go ahead and start applying it across the landscape here. Let me take my pins out before I lose them permanently because the, uh, the adhesive should be pretty well, should be sticking and holding fairly well at this point. And the uh, sculpt mode will dry and hold everything in place as well. Okay, so let me go ahead and we'll start smearing this on here. Get a nice coating to fill in these contours. There we go. So you just want to bring that around to smooth out the shape here. Okay, that's done. Let me go ahead and get some more up front here because we want to get the uh, contours nice and rounded. Like so. Sort of like icing a cake. And remember that, you know, this doesn't have to be perfect because you can trim it later. You can sand it down to a final finish later. And I will probably end up coming back and doing a second layer once this sets up, just to give this area in here a little bit more rolling definition. Okay, so we got this. Let's see how this works out.
Okay, we're getting that done. I want to try to bring this out with a little bit of definition and texture out here to the blue line, which is going to be the edge of the hill, so to speak. So get that in there and get it filled in some more. This is starting to firm up now, so I need to get this down and in place before it sets up to the point I can't make use it anymore. Because I'd like to get this whole batch used. Okay, so I'm going to bring it on over here and smooth it out. The more smoothing you can do when you're applying it, the less sanding and other work you'll have to do later on. Clean up the edge a bit. There we go. Okay, I think that's as much as I can do for now. So I'm going to let this set up for about um, a half hour to an hour, and then we'll come back and do some more work on it. Okay, everything's dried, so now what I want to do is come back here, and one thing let me point out that you can do. Uh, as this is drying and setting up, uh, you can come back with a wet finger, you can run it across here and smooth out any areas that are sticking up and need poking down, anything like that, and that will help uh, speed the process of, of cleaning this up because that's something you won't have to sand down. Okay, so on this hill now, I'm gonna go ahead and paint that with my, uh, my green acrylic paint, and then we'll go ahead and do some brown here in a minute. Okay, let's see how this is gonna work. Okay, here we go. So we can get something on this ski slope here. Get this looking more like a, a grassy meadow instead of a snow, snow covered hill. And one thing I, I like about the Sculpta Mold is it doesn't dry to a nice to a completely flat surface, it gives you a little kind of a bumpy uh, feel to it. So that'll look good once it's under the uh, under the grass, under the, the foam flocking. Here we go. One thing I'm going to have is with the, um, with the gas works over here, that's mainly going to be gravel and dirt 
exposed in there, so we'll have that appearance. And then we'll have the uh, texture of the grasses and the like here with some trees, that kind of thing. So it's going to break up the monotony of the uh, of this flat surface that we've got going here. Okay, and I'm going to carry it on out to the edge here. I don't know if this is on camera or not. Since I don't have a cameraman taking care of it, I can't make adjustments on the fly here. Okay, so that area, and I'll be painting this area up front here green as well, but for right now, I need to stop, clean this brush, and dip it into the brown. Okay, let me get this one out of the way, put him up front, and then we'll go ahead and start working with the, this muddy brown color. This stuff goes a long way. I think I've been using this mud color here for about five years now, so. This area in here will be a mixture of ballast and probably sand, just to give it a nice gritty appearance. Okay. Okay, so that's a pretty good coverage. I've got one little spot of uh, plaster that I need to cover right here with some green paint, so I have to get that back out. But that pretty much wraps up this back section, so let me come around here to the front because I know there is at least one spot here at the signal box that I want to uh, use a little bit of the brown. Okay. And then everything else in here is going to have to be green, so I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the green paint here. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead up front here. And let me get some tools out of the way. Okay, so on this area up front, I'm going to go ahead and cover this with green, since it's going to be mainly scenery.
And right back here is going to be the backboard, which will be an upcoming episode on installing a backboard on the layout. And we'll get this area in here. And right in here, I'm going to have vegetation up against the engine house. Well, that's about it for today. You know, it gives us a good representation of the difference between the areas that are going to be covered with grass and other types of vegetation and the uh, areas that are just going to be dirt and gravel and ballast and that kind of thing. So that's it for today. I've got to let this all dry before I can do any more. And the, the next thing we'll be doing here is applying the uh, scenery base and I like to apply a scenery base of uh, ground foam uh, just so that when I start applying other stuff on top of the uh, layout, uh, there won't be any bare spots uh, poking through because I generally tend to build up my scenery starting with a, a, a general fine scenery base of, you know, blended green or some, some type of, of color, uh, base color like that. And uh, on the earth area, I'll be using some uh, fine uh, uh, soil that I have prepared using locally available soils. And then I build up from there because you need to add a lot of uh, a variety and texture as, as you create your scenery. And that means starting with a very fine material and adding various layers of coarser material over that. Plus, if you're going to be using things like... Um, uh, grass mats and, and the like, um, you know, you're pulling those out and teasing those out and it gets kind of thin in places and you can see through it. So you need something underneath of it that uh, is going to be green or brown or whatever. Have a great weekend and we'll see you here on Monday with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.